Hi, I'm Dan and I work at Fanatic Bike. We're known for helping people create gorgeous custom builds with some of the best mountain bike brands on the planet. We've separated all the parts of a mountain bike into six different systems, which we're gonna break down in this series. With a good understanding of how all these components come together, you'll be able to confidently configure your own dream build. So stay tuned and join us in understanding mountain bikes. In our previous episode, we covered our frame and frame geometry. We also talked about our suspension, the front fork, rear shock, as well as our headset, which attaches our fork to our frame. In this episode, we're gonna cover the system that helps us drive our bike forward, called the drivetrain. Simply put, a bicycle drivetrain uses a pedal-powered crank to turn the rear wheel using a chain and gears. The ratio of these gears determines how many revolutions the wheel is going to turn for each revolution of the crank arm. For example, in a one-to-one -one ratio, like I've got it set up right now, for each revolution of the crank arm, the wheel is going to turn once. Let's try that out. Back to where we started. With a two-to-one ratio for every revolution of your crank arm, your wheel is going to turn twice. I changed the gear we're on back here, so let's give that a go. That's one revolution of the rear wheel and two revolutions of the rear wheel. Crank arm is back where we started. So the smaller the ratio, for example, one to one, the easier it is to pedal, like when you're going up a hill. With a larger gear ratio, two to one, you're gonna be able to pedal faster, but it's gonna be harder to pedal. The bicycle drivetrain is an extremely efficient system that uses a chain to transfer power from your legs to the rear wheel. It does, through, it does so starting with a crank set, which is simply two offset arms attached by a rotating spindle. This is also what your pedals thread into, and it's worth noting that the non-drive side or left side crank arm is reverse threaded, so that as it's all spinning, you don't tighten your pedals so much so that they can never be removed. On the drive side of our crank arm, you'll find your chain ring. This is a replaceable gear that can vary in a number of different ways. They can be made of aluminum or steel, which changes how much they weigh and how quickly they wear out. They can be oval, like this one, or round, which changes how the power is delivered through the rotation. And they can have different number of teeth, which, like we just discussed, will change the available gear ratios, ratios that you can have on a given drivetrain. These days, pretty much all chain rings run what's called a narrow, wide tooth profile which means that the alternating teeth differ in their width. This makes it so the chain meshes really well with the chain ring and keeps it from falling on, off under most conditions. Regardless of which chain ring you pick, the purpose of this is to get the power from your legs to the rear wheel. Now, to connect all this to your frame, you need one crucial piece called the bottom bracket. This is simply two bearings, much like your headset, through which the crank spindle goes. Many of them these days are threaded, like the one I have here, or the one on our frame over here, on our example frame, is press fit, which means that we use a press to squeeze it into the bottom bracket shell. If the cranks are where the power from your legs enters the drivetrain, the cassette is where that power is going. A cassette is simply a cluster of gears mounted to the rear wheel, typically 12 cogs, ranging from about 10 teeth at the bottom to roughly 50 to 52 these days at the top end. Such a wide range of gears gives you a lot of wiggle room to find the perfect gear ratio, whether you're pedaling up a really steep hill or charging down a fast speedway. To move our chain up and down these gears, we have what's called a derailleur. This is simply a spring-loaded mechanism with two pulley wheels inside this cage here. Now, with our chain running from our chain ring to our cassette and down through our derailleur, we have a system that efficiently moves that power from our legs to the rear wheel. The spring-loaded derailleur is also able to accommodate increasing lengths of chain needed when you go up to a larger, bigger gear or when your bike moves through its travel. The last piece of the drivetrain puzzle is your shifter. This is the remote that communicates with your derailleur and lets you move the chain up and down the cassette. It's a spring-loaded device that, through the use of this cable, moves the derailleur incremental amounts and puts those pulley wheels directly below a cog on the cassette. 
They're mounted up on the handlebar, typically on the bar itself or to your brake, and are actuated with your thumb. That's it for part two of understanding mountain bikes, mountain bike drivetrains. With a basic understanding of how all these components work together, we can see how they turn power from our legs into forward movement and what makes mountain bikes or bicycles in general some of the most efficient human powered vehicles out there. Tune in next time for part three, where we'll discuss one of the most mind boggling parts of bicycles, the wheels. We'll also talk about tires and a few different ways to set them up on a modern mountain bike. If you like these videos, please subscribe to our channel. We really like making them and that helps us out. If you have any questions or comments, of course, let us know in the comments below. You can also always give us a call at 844-FANATIC or shoot us an email at sales at fanaticbike.com. Stay tuned. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.